Hey guys, what we have here is an APC Backup UPS Pro 1500. This is your consumer grade UPS product. It's capable of 810 watts of output. And it has a 9 amp battery built in. Um, so the big things to take away from that is the amount of power, which is pretty high, this is going to allow you to power things like gaming computer, a whole bunch of stuff. The issue is just that it's not going to run very long for that. Some cool stuff you get with this is a really cool interface. It's got all kinds of information that it tells you right on the screen, which is very cool. It tells your input, your output. Um, it does do digital sine wave, which is something uh, that most people think is pretty important. It basically means that you're going to get perfectly clean power to all of your equipment. On the back of this unit, this is what a lot of people are going to want to see. You get quite a few ports. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, so on this side, we actually get one, two, three, four, five battery backup ports. This is what's actually going to be powered by the unit. You can plug into devices. On the other side, we get the same five non-battery backup ports. Um, these basic, This is pretty cool too because you can run extra devices through this and one of the benefits of course of that is that you know you got one plug to plug into the wall there are a couple master ports on here uh, these are the green power ports some of you uh, might understand what that means uh, essentially this allows you in the settings to turn these on and what will happen is if the master is not on these controlled ports so like over here shut off this is pretty cool for like if you turn off your TV, it'll shut, it'll unplug the sound system because we know all that stuff pulls just a little bit of power even when it's not doing anything. One of the interesting things that you're probably going to want to take note of with this is that it's a pretty reasonable cost to get into. Uh, you can find these on sale sometimes $115, $120, and that's a great price. Uh, that's not the only cost you're going to have to think about. One of the extra things that you're going to be paying is a touch extra electricity. I've got this plugged into my kilowatt down here so that you can see. Hopefully you can see that there. 15, 16 watts just being on. And as you can see, it's not powering anything right now. So that's just the power to keep it on to run the electronics that are going to be cleaning the power and detecting everything. And that's pretty standard uh, for a unit like this. We're going to go ahead and plug it in. What we're going to be plugging it into here is my gaming computer. And it's all there. It's running a dual Radeon R9 390s and an overclocked i7 3770K. So it's pretty beefy. We'll get to see how much power it's pulling and we'll get to see how it does. I imagine that we'll only get a couple minutes of backup at full load, say for like gaming. Uh, but at idle, it should do pretty good. This isn't the only unit I have either. I'll take you out and show you. I have a second one of these. I'll show you what I'm using it for. So the other uh, APC back UPS Pro 1500 that I have uh, is here in my living room and it runs my small media center PC and it runs the TV. It also has an LED light plugged into it that could be used in the event of power outage. Um, it happens also to be plugged in the PlayStation. The big thing for this is that in the event of a power outage, I would have a few minutes. And in fact, at this load level, we can see that it is estimating 44 minutes running the media server and TV and everything uh, that I could possibly get to check on the news, check on what's going on, um, essentially just give you a couple extra minutes, not to mention a single point of power plug-in if you need to plug in your generator, uh, which of course once you start to run out of power you're going to want to start getting your generator connections together. But this one runs out here and it's at a relatively low, lo low load comparatively. We saw it was you know, below 150 watts, similar to the way that I'm running um, the one that runs my network and such. 
so that I'll still have internet, I'll have the TV capability, I'll have, this is actually a uh, voice over IP phone, uh, which is uh, Magic Jack, but it's plugged in also to the APC so that the internet should stay up given that their lines are okay and that they still have backup power of some sort and I should be able to get access to anything I need which is very good not to mention having an extra light is always good okay guys so we got it all plugged up we have the gaming computer along with a 27 inch monitor 1440p plugged in and running right now it's just idling let's see how it's doing so 122, 123 watts at idle, 24 there. Pretty low power. It should run for a little while. The cool thing about this interface is it does give you some options to see what's going on. It'll even give us an estimated runtime here. So it estimates about 46 minutes. We will do a little bit of a runtime show here to show you what it'll do. Uh, but I bet that's going to go down once we crank the computer up. I want to talk just a little bit about the setup I have here. So sitting right next to this. APC Backup Pro UPS 1500. Um, I also have a uh, APC unit that is uh, from a server rack. This is one that they were throwing out at uh, Corporation where I work because it had bad batteries and was too small. I bought some replacement batteries and it'll actually run what we need. This is only capable of 450 watts. That's why we're not using it to run the gaming computer. Uh, but the I'll show you, I have quite a few things plugged into battery backup, and let's talk about why. So, <clears throat> first of all, the setup is, we talked about those non-battery powered ports on the back of the uh, Pro 1500. And we actually plug uh, this uh, SUA750RM2U into that port. Now, the reason that we do that is essentially so that I can have just one plug back here in the wall uh, that plugs into everything. Now the benefit of that is in the event that the power goes out and it's out for long enough that I need extra power to all the stuff that I'm running, I can actually just run a single extension cord in from a generator and it'll run that. Now into the back of this uh, 750R unit I have this power strip. It's just simple cheap power strip but it's got a bunch of stuff plugged into it. So this is actually what's running my network. So I have a Nighthawk here and a Netgear ProSafe switch uh, that also just this little fan which helps keep the equipment cool that's plugged in essentially just to this unit. Um, and that'll keep my network up and running in case the power goes out. And the big thing is what a lot of people see are brownouts. And that's really what people want to get these battery backup units for. It's not like you're going to get a run for days or anything like that on battery power, but what happens is, and what people consider a brownout is, so the power goes out for just a minute, maybe less, and then it comes right back on. Now, well, for lights and stuff, that's not that big of a deal if the lights go off and back on, but what happens is it crashes your computer, it crashes everything, and then you got to turn it all back on. And so these are good at least for those couple minutes for when the power goes off and back on. And in the case of a slightly longer one, it gives you enough time to get your generator cables in and keep everything running. So I like to plug lots of stuff into my battery backup units. The reason for that is because they're the best at surge protecting. These will protect you against any surges, uh, low voltage, not only that, but just dirty power in general. So the power gets dirty, it'll kick the battery, it'll leave everything on, it'll help prevent stuff from getting broken. So also in the 750R unit I run a cable and that also runs back here to keep my home camera system running and server, terror station and secondary server all up and running so that once again in a power outage all the important stuff keeps running if not just for one minute when the power browns out but potentially for you know in this case, it's estimating 46 idle in the computer. I've actually done some testing. We can get almost an hour running just the networking equipment. And also the one that I have set up in the living room, of course, gets right around an hour or two just running uh, the TV and the media server and, all, and the sound bar, which is very good. So I even do things like my cell phone is plugged in 
to battery backup and that's just for the same thing so in the event of power outage I can add some power to my cell phone I don't have to think about it just plug it in where I normally do and I can get some extra power before the power runs all the way out so that I won't be in an emergency situation and not have access to a cell phone uh, I run an IP phone also so more phones more technology more access to the important things but let's continue so as, as you can see from the differences uh, on the front of this you get just a, a pretty basic interface uh, you know it shows you like your battery and then some this is actually your load and then it shows you uh, if it's running through the power in the wall or through the battery which is cool but on this unit you get all kinds of really cool information that we were talking about not only do you get all this but when you come up here to the computer they give you a program this is your power shoot um, it's called power shoot personal edition this is what they give you out of the box and it gives you a lot of information but most notably you can see right off the main page we get our estimated runtime we can even see things like you know historical events we can see how often it's blacked out under voltage or you know got electrical noise right now uh, it's detecting a single blackout for five seconds which was probably me unplugging it at some point to test it out um, it actually looks like that was quite a while ago so there might have been a real thing you can check on your current status it'll give you your load you can see it actually says 865 watts so when I said 810 earlier I was wrong it was 865 sorry about that guys and but we can see it run its own personal test uh, you can see how much how good the battery is whether it's time to change it out or not and it'll even estimate your usage per day and it'll even give you a cost estimation uh, based on your prices if you put that into it you can set up some really cool things how sensitive do you want it to noise uh, that type of stuff when do you want it to cut out for volts and essentially somewhere in the middle is usually good um, on under voltage I got it turned all the way up basically I don't want my uh, when the voltage gets really low your power supplies and all your units have to work extra hard to convert the power and if you're already near the limit of that power supply you could potentially hurt it so we just I want it to kick off kick to battery as, as soon as possible when the voltage starts to get low um, it's not going to hurt it and those milliseconds or you know a couple extra minutes while the, while the power is browning out at the wrong level is is going to be fine too of course you get the option to turn on and off those uh, energy saver ports that we talked about uh, I'm not using them in this setup because uh, I need everything to keep running I charge things off of you know like my USB bank which is plugged in uh, to battery backup also and the PC itself runs itself um, we're already giving up quite a few watts as, as we saw just to have the battery backup units on and so another extra two or three watts to make sure I'm getting to charge stuff is no big deal um, but we get lots of really f cool figures now now that it's plugged in the computer recognizes it's there and you can actually tell the computer to protect itself so the big problem that we talked about with it crashing and you know you could potentially lose saves and that type of stuff well now that it's plugged into the computer it can basically treat it just like your laptop would treat it it can put your computer in a hibernation mode as it's running down it can if you set it up right you can save have your work automatically saved by the programs as they're getting shut down you can put the computer to sleep mode which is probably not a good idea hibernation is better because obviously it can shut it all the way down and then not need the power power goes the rest of the way out you're all right for the case of this I'm actually not going to be using any of those settings for this unit basically if I'm sitting here and working on something I can hear that the power goes on I can tell the power goes out the APC unit does have an extremely loud alarm which I've disabled because I'll be honest I don't need anyone to tell me I don't need an extremely loud alarm to tell me that the power's out I can see the power's out and you can hear these things kick on we're gonna run a test here in just a minute okay so we got the camera set up here and we've got our units on both of them I'm gonna pull that single power plug both of the units are going to kick into battery backup mode <laughs> we've got our firefighter fire extinguisher here uh, just in case something goes wrong it's always good when you have a lot of electronics to have some sort of fire extinguisher on hand 
this should be just fine for us it's uh, fine for electronics that's good so let's pull this and see what happens okay so we're on battery here we can see both units kicked into battery mode battery this is telling us we're on battery we've actually got a warning up here on the PC letting us know the UPS is in battery mode that's good just in case you missed it you can hear they're very loud uh, there's a humming that you can hear it's as it's converting the electricity and the bigger one actually kicks a fan on uh, to keep running the fan nothing is shut down nothing blinked nothing came off uh, I mean they kicked straight to bat battery just like that no issues uh, estimating 52 minutes still on runtime and uh, for the uh, 1500 unit and while we don't get a estimated time on this unit you can see uh, we are full battery on both so let's plug it back in this should kick back the humming stopped the computer informed me right away that we are back on AC power and everything is all right well, we've got no other issues next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna load up a video game on the computer we're gonna crank it up see how high the wattage is and then we're gonna do a kick to battery test while we're pulling all the extra power so we've got Grand Theft Auto 5 loaded up here at 1440p um, I loaded this game up because I know it really runs the computer hard and we're going to get a good idea of how hard we can run it and we are 705, 712 watts there it's a lot of power uh, so this thing is having its work cut out for it cleaning up all that power being ready to battery back it up in case something goes wrong it's estimated run time 5 minutes so at this type of load we do not get very long run time so let's go ahead and kick it to battery. Let's see if it can do it. Uh, this should be much harder for it to kick seamlessly to battery without shutting the computer off. Let's see what happens. So we are kicked to battery officially. It's lit off. Let's see what happened up here. The game is still running, the computer is still running, everything seems to still be up and running. Um, of course, we got Power Shoot, where uh, it's trying to hibernate the computer, we're going to cancel that. Uh, so, I didn't get those settings shut off, I guess, yet, or right. Uh, basically, it was trying to shut the computer down uh, because we had an estimated amount of time that was less left. Uh, the load has dropped now, it's saying 10 minutes, that's because we went to the pause screen up there. But, as you can see, it kicked over just fine. It didn't care that it had the extra load. Obviously, uh, they wouldn't say it could do all the extra power if it couldn't, because uh, otherwise that would be really bad advertising. But there's the official test. We're we're pretty hard on the load there, and it it kicked right over, no problems. So that's that's pretty great. Just wanted to show you guys here. After even that short stint we ran at hard power, um, we we're already down to 83% battery. Just from pulling the power there and letting it run at the 700 plus watts there which is pretty cool in conclusion I really like this backup battery unit and I think everybody should have some sort of backup battery for their house for all the reasons we talked about earlier we saw that this worked perfectly and I'm really happy with this purchase thanks for coming along guys and checking out this back UPS 1500 APC unit with me if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button down below if you like what we're doing on this channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button and we hope to see you here next week bye guys